Crime! Crime is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. With his doctor, John Chef, you need more cough drops. You're a doctor now? That's right. Your parents must be so proud. You went from podcaster and uh, occasional tattoo artist and bicycle enthusiast to doctor. Is bicycle enthusiast considered a job or a career field? I mean, for you it is. I've been getting paid if, like if we're, shit. If we're, if we're going with what your careers have been, bicycle enthusiast... I have it's a, probably pretty high on the list. I have a new career that I'm starting in DJing. The first thing I'll do is play the fucking music. Crime is the show that starts now. now. Like right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything send them to me. Him. Don't Let, you dare. Crime podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label it John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I hope your St. Patty's Day was event-filled and that nothing terrible happened to your dick. Yeah. Because a lot of bad things happened at Crime Live. Crime Live. Oh, my God, guys. It was so much fun. It was the fucking best. Dude, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, we tried to both. We, we thank blocked. We thank blocked. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who you came out. Thank like, you, too. Thank you to all the all the supporters and fans. Thank you to the to the random people who showed up because they couldn't get into the main room and original room shows. Oh, yeah. And they were like, we can't see famous comedians. Let's watch these guys make cum jokes about criminals. But they might be new fans now, so that's, that's cool. That's why I'm thanking them. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who came Seriously. and supported it, and even the people that didn't come but, like, came. But felt like it. You felt like you were coming, but you yeah, didn't yeah. come. You ever done that? I mean, yeah, like a sneeze, like if you sneeze real hard multiple times in a row. I've never sneezed real hard and been like, oh my God, I need a meatball sandwich. You know, have you ever done the thing where you sneeze so hard that you pull a muscle and then you wish that you had C3 risk, risk and insurance, insurance services? services. <laughs> Guys, that that transition was a little bit choppy, but you know what? I did three scripts last week, so I don't give a fuck. That is the best read you're going to get from C3, which is our good friends, brought to you by Joseph Earl. He's the best. The best. You need insurance for things, dude. The, the earth is crazy, right? Tumultuous. So it's so uh, wild, weather. Bro. The weather's crazy. Yeah, you might if, if you need mudslide insurance, climate change insurance, lightning storm insurance, right? Coming when you weren't supposed to come insurance. And then you pull something insurance. We were just talking about that. Go to c3insurance.com, hit up our buddy Joe Earl. If you get a policy with him, he will give you a $25 Amazon gift card. Which if you get enough policies, then you could get $100 worth. Yeah, so get and get like something. a lot of policies and then Use that money to, to you know what, to buy purple shirts is really what I'm going to encourage you to do. Or like go, the one I'm wearing today, which is fantastic. Or use that money to go on Patreon and just, you know, <laughs> keep oh, it to Or crime. jump on our Patreon and get, join the Sticker of the Month Club, which is super fun. <laughs> Don't waste time buying fucking purple shirts. Hey, those of you on the East Coast, those of you in the Southeast of our country, were you sad you couldn't make it to Crime Live? Well, guess what? We're going to be at CrimeCon Crime in, in, in Nashville, Tennessee, May 4th through 6th. Uh, it's a it's a con for all things crime related. There's a bunch of really normal stuff like Nancy Grace is talking, and they're gonna have seminars on how to catch liars and on crime scene investigation, like real crime stuff. For yeah, there's, serious there's people crimeies. who are serious, and there's a podcast row that includes our good friends from White Wine Crew, oh, True yeah. Crime, Caitlin and Carrie. They're gonna be there. We're gonna be there. There may or may not be a live episode happening. So uh, if you, you go to the CrimeCon website, CrimeCon.com. Mystery! Com, there might be. Use the promo code CRIME with three eyes, and you can get 10% off your admission to CrimeCon. And you can come see people talk about things that we make fun of. But mm-hmm. they're really, they take it seriously. It'd be though. cool if we, if we just riff on Nancy Grace doing her show, and we just stand by and just do crime on her while she's talking. Oh, we're kicked out? Sorry. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, Nancy. I don't know how she talks. But she'd be like, will you boys please shut the fuck up? I think that's exact. That's a perfect imitation of her voice. You like, know who has an even better Nancy Grace impression? So our I've guest been today? Told, our guest today. Uh, you, he's been on this show before. The and episode he's killed the day Travolta show. died, oh. which is one of our personal favorite titles. It's just an amazing episode. He's a fantastic comedian, has a great podcast called Spoil the Beans with our good friend Derek Poston. Put your virtual hands together for a son of a Hey, what's up? I'm like, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be the Nancy Grace. Well, Nancy Grace has a little drawl, talks like this. Does she? I'm pretty oh, sure. She gets some sexy. And then, and then she'll be like, like here's this white girl that's in trouble. And Only Nancy the Grace. white girls, though, <laughs> specifically. <laughs> I'd, I would do a show about brown girls who are missing, but the ratings just aren't as good. Yeah. That's how she talks? I think so. That's closest. Am yeah. I the only she one turned on in this room? 
Huh? Am I the only one turned on in this That's room? That's all it takes for me to turn you on is that voice? Yeah, yeah. Just God, give man, me the southern, a long time ago. the southern lawyer voice gets me going. I've been turned on since this has started. <laughs> hey, John Shevsky, <laughs> maybe put out, make some more stickers so we can get that sticker thing going or something. Are you turned on now? Sure. Let's get it going. Come on. I'm just standing there with a boner like, are you going to make more biscuits and gravy? Hey, Jonathan, I know that you love purple shirts. Uh, that's kind of creepy that you call me by my full first name. Hey, Jonathan David. That, oh, God. That's <laughs> disgusting. Mom, get, Jonathan away, David get away from my sex fantasy, Mom. Do you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? That's all my you mom knew how to cook, too. Oh, God. Why did you make him your mom? Did you research my mom for this? What's happening? Well, first he called me by my full first name. And then he's like, I'll make you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. If, any, if anyone knows me, that's all my mom cooks, that and mac mm-hmm. and cheese from the box. Oh, wow. So I, I got a little fucking grossed out there. Stephen Sean Griffiths. Stephen Wolf. Was born on December 24th, 1969 in Dewsbury, West Riding of Yorkshire, England. What the fuck? Say that, say that place again. Dewsbury, West Riding of Yorkshire, England. It's God. a Dewsbury. Be careful around the bend, boys. <laughs> I'm fiction like a like a British political cartoon where there's a guy based off Hunter S. Thompson, but he's not Hunter S. Thompson. The English are so fucking pretentious. Just name your city something normal. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> Even the cities need titles. You, think, yeah. you guys think Dewsbury is pretentious? Dewsbury no. sounds like a dorky ass name. But right. everything else around that. Dewsbury, West Riding of Yorkshire, England. Yeah, yeah, Go fuck it's yourself. a long name. That's kind of cocky. Like, this is Los Angeles, <laughs> yeah. California, United States. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it, it's not Los Angeles of California, the United States. Or it's not like Los Angeles north of Torrance riding through <laughs> <laughs> Malibu. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> I actually love that, dude. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> riding through Mal- Malibu. Yeah. By it, the Knights of El Segundo, <laughs> I order you. His father, also Stephen, was a rep for a Frozen Foods Company. Oh, hey. also Stephen's a terrible name. That's great, dude. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> also, a full name. Also, also Stephen. Fuck you. My name is also. <laughs> you know, that's a good thing. He took the also off for his son, though. He didn't want to curse his son with the you same shitty name. You can lick my yeah, asshole. <laughs> his mother, Mariah, he was a catch that. telephone operator. Oh. Yeah, that kind of telephone. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, bro. Oh, that kind of, oh she was that kind of telephone No, she officer? was not. No. But I just wanted you to get more boned up. What are you wearing, Mariah? I just wanted you to get more boned up, Jonathan David. Did you say her? Gross, dude. <laughs> what is this, the boner killing episode? Uh, sorry, mom, and sorry, me. I don't know. I, li- I, I like your mom. Yeah, yeah, he's into her. <laughs> yeah, I'm, t- I'm into this. Well, that's why Hassan's here, really. Yeah, my dad's a listener. He'll let her know. <laughs> See if they swing in, yo. The young couple, both only 20 years old, married five months before little Steven's arrival. Oh, I'm right. a few months late. <laughs> oh, would you be my wife? <laughs> I've already reserved the uh, the banquet hall. It's really just the the back room of a Tesco. That's a very British. Oh wow, reference. what a what a poll. Thank you, man. What a poll. For your all the British listeners, they'd be like, wow, I can't believe he knows what that is. The Tesco? Is not that a grocery store? Or is that a grocery store it's and like, gas it's, station? It's, it's like it's somewhere between 7 Eleven and, and an actual Ralph. grocery yeah, store. Yeah, those things trip middle. me the fuck There's out. Big ones, but those trip me out, those little like strip mall in the middle of nowhere on a gas station in England, right? Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> I just I don't know where I'm <laughs> yeah. Put your goddamn thumb on the page, lady. The family started off in government housing. All but right. dad worked his way up the corporate ladder. By Mill? the late 70s, the Griffiths had three kids and enough money to buy a beautiful red brick starter home in the West Hills of West Yorkshire. Oh, oh fine. All right. That's a better town name at the very least. As a child, Stephen was notably smart and attractive, but he had trouble fitting in. He was always neatly dressed and avoided roughhousing. Oh, he's like a, like a prissy? Mm-hmm. Everyone would be like, hey, come on. He'd be like, I don't want to dirty up my elbow pads. People describe his voice as very camp. What does okay, that mean? so kind of gay? That's a nice way of saying kind of a gay voice. Yeah, he has a gay voice. Camp yeah. is kind of gay, all Yes. Right. So he's got like an English lisp. Hello. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm a lady. Yes. <laughs> I thought smart, attractive people, do they have trouble fitting in places? This one does. Yeah, that's very weird. I've never <laughs> thought attractive people have, as having trouble fitting in. you never had an attractive weirdo? Yeah, I bet, I bet, I I bet a couple right. good-looking psychos. You know what I'm talking about. I guess, I guess you're right. Where you're like, oh, you're very good-looking, but everything about who you are is bad and not in the cool way. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah, serial killers. Ted Bundy was a great-looking guy. No, but see, Ted, Ted Bundy fit in. That was his thing. Yeah, almost as much as Al Bundy. <laughs> Has that joke been done a thousand times before? Has it been done? Have people combined Ted and Al Bundy? <laughs> they both put their hands in their pants when they watch TV. They both sell shoes. Did they really? Did... And hate women. Do they hate women? I have no oh, idea. I mean, they definitely don't like women. Oh, that exactly. is for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is both of them. That's Al Bundy like... hated women. He just Yo, his you, wife you, drove him you crazy. You can go on YouTube and just watch 
hours of Al Bundy shitting on fat chicks compilation. That's hilarious. The whole Al, like, he started that whole movement against women yeah, or whatever no, no it was. Yeah, no ma'am. Yeah, no ma'am. Yeah, he's got the shirt. <laughs> it's a fucking hilarious shirt. <laughs> I love that show. In 1982, the parents got divorced and the kids went to live with mom, who was single for the first time in her adult life. Found Could you give me some spotted dick? Mariah hit the clubs, often staying out late, occasionally bringing a fella home at the end of the night. Oh, man. I like are how you, Slayton winked at me. Yeah. yeah. yeah you are a fella. Fella, like you, you know, with a penis and balls and needs. You have all those? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I do, congrats, especially man. the needs. Dude, Please. I'm so proud of you. This with... dick's dry. Help. Just go outside. It's I raining. Got... That's true, huh? It's raining wet stuff. With dad gone and mom partying, Stephen began getting in trouble. At first, it was little things like shoplifting police would pick him up and deliver him to his front door with a stern warning. Give me a... I think I need another spanking. I've been naughty. How many warnings do you get? I mean, first of all, <laughs> it's Britain. Second of all, it's the 80s. Um, Third, he's super white. I knew so, Slayton was going to list uh, off the white. Basically, his whole life is going to be is warnings. Okay. I don't know if you know this about the criminal justice system, but there's actually... It's, it's the 17th Amendment... It's 17.5. People don't actually know it, know a lot of... Right, what does but it it's, say? It's, it's, the, it's, a, it's codified that white men who, even if you don't own property, which is the really pl- proletariat part of it, we get three warnings. Oh. I know. I know it makes so many things make sense oh. about this country now. That's why there's three get-out-of-jail-free cards in Monopoly. Yes. they didn't expect brown people to play that. Exactly. <laughs> brown people own property? Yeah, that's new. Oof. That's new. Yeah. yeah the, no, the game was very against that. Oh, man. And just, you know. Why do you think that guy has a monocle? Yes, true. And so we can look down on on, mm-hmm. on minorities, on, on the non-whites. And it wasn't long <laughs> before the neighbors began to complain. <laughs> According to one neighbor, quote, he didn't play out and you only saw him at night. We used to see him with an air gun shooting birds. Then we used to see him dissecting birds. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, what the? F- that's, that's the, the sign, of, serial killer that's the sign of a serial killer. Is, that, is he setting things on fire? It looked as if he was enjoying what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't dissecting them bit by bit. He was ripping them apart. Yeah, Good God. That's fucking disgusting and Good terrifying. God. Was he jerking off? Because that's what exactly what happens when people, they do that. I assume he was jerking off. Yeah. Oh, that's like my baseline All assumption. All that sticky blood and feathers stuck to his hand and I just want to point out we're on page one and we're already to ripping apart birds. I, I want to puke. I, know. I don't like the sound of that, but <laughs> I'm kind of a puss when it comes to that kind of stuff. Worried about their son's habits, mom and dad <laughs> pooled their resources to send Stephen to Queen Elizabeth Grammar School of Wakefield. A prestigious 400-year-old institution with a reputation for producing... Of having no birds. Of no... Yeah. yeah. It's a birdless city. Yeah. They, got, they cut down all the trees, and they have a giant fence. Like there's a dome around it. Mm. There will not be a bird here. You'll have to go next door to the other town. Someone to think of a school. name. <laughs> yeah. You have to go to Bird Town. Bird Town. Oh, Birdenshire. Yeah, Bird Town through Ostrichville. Birdville, which we had a Birdville on recently. See? There you go. It all comes full circle, depending on how fast you're traveling. Steven stood out, but not for his academic prowess. Of course. Teachers and classmates noticed his fascination with weapons and martial arts. His love of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, fuck. And his ever-present briefcase containing a knife... Kung Fu magazines and the occasional throwing star. This is when kids could bring knives to school. Yeah, yeah you can't bring knives to school now. Was no one like, no. hey, you should? Why am I even? Gonna have, watch why this am guy. I having a kid? God, Slayton. if my kid can't bring a knife to school, what's oh man, the point? yeah, schools changed quite a bit, Slayton. <laughs> quite a bit. That's, yeah. That, why? What happened? You can't you bring know, knives. So let's just put it that way. I don't know. I don't know what's been going on in schools since about '99, but I can't. I can't put my finger on of it. Of course, he continued his favorite hobby. Of killing and cutting up woodland creatures. Oh, my God. God. This kid is fucking... He's a serial killer. His parents didn't talk to him or hold him right or take care of him when he was a little baby. Watch him become, like, a taxidermist. Watch him, watch him use this into something useful. I mean, it was a boring episode of crime. You're like, and then it, yeah. uh, the end. The illegal taxidermy. It's yeah. like, oh, you could have picked a better he, story. It was a tax evasion story. <laughs> I would never have thought. At one point, police were called over a collection of disturbing bathroom wall poetry containing threats to kill one of the teachers. Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm going to cut off my teacher's head and also kill that squirrel over there. It's the best place for that's the best place for angry poetry. Bathroom walls. I I always liked uh no matter how much you wiggle or dance, the last three drops go down your pants. We're talking about 
Bathroom poetry. Animal blood. Oh, no, yeah, bathroom yeah, yeah. poetry. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, I yeah. thought you just meant like random thought. Because yeah. that one comes into my head. <laughs> no, that's a good one. Or uh, be, if you sprinkle when you tinkle. Don't yeah. look here. The joke is in your hand. I like that one, too. That one's good. That's pretty good. That's a classic. Flush hard. It's a long way to the kitchen. God, you've got these things memorized. I'm I, went to, I went to summer camp. That was all the bathrooms I'm were. I'm very impressed. Really? That's yeah. Yeah. Wow. You had you had very you had very uh, I don't know creative it was bathroom Jews. graffiti. It was Jews. We're oh, all so you're good writers. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. No one could prove it was Stephen. At but they all had an idea. <laughs> but they were all pretty <laughs> sure. What was the actual What was the actual poetry that was up there? Does, I don't remember. Say? I don't oh, remember what he wrote. It didn't. Doesn't actually. Okay. At 17, he dropped out spending his days in his room or wandering around town. In the spring of 87, a supermarket manager caught him shoplifting. They wrestled for a moment before Steven slashed the man across the face with his knife. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck. Yeah. The manager got 15 stitches. He got three years in juvenile detention. All right. Wow. I guess that's at least a punishment. It probably I mean, helped the manager feels... get laid more, right? Like, after that, he's like, fucking, I got a fucking scar. Yeah, I'm a manager, but I'll... I manage this. Although Juvie seems like a place where he'll do well. I mean, because he'll because he'll get along with people finally. No, I think no one's gonna fuck with him there either. Oh, maybe not. I think Juvie yeah. kids are too cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> do you know anyone who went to ju- to Juvie who wasn't cool? Everyone who went to Juvie was cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's a, I mean, it's a sign of coolness. Like you're not scared of anything, including the rules. You went to fucking jail as a kid. You went to kid jail. Kid jail, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. So Coming good. to Adult Swim, kid jail, <laughs> like super jail, but for kids. Doctors ordered a report on his mental health, but found no formal mental illness. He was diagnosed with a personality disorder and released in less than 18 months. Jesus. But Stephen didn't go home. While he occasionally saw his siblings and his father, who was now with a new successful family, he wanted nothing to do with his mother. At this point, Mariah had stopped working and moved back into public housing. She rarely went out except to pursue her hobby taking paper rubbings of gravestones. What? What the fuck is that? That's a weird fucking hobby. What do you mean? What's weird about it? It's boring and it takes time and you have to buy paper all the time. What's a paper rubbing? Uh, you take like wax paper and put it over yeah. the gravestone and take like a crayon or whatever and go like they wave it back Pastels and forth. Until or a the graphite, uh, a graphite stick. Yeah. Indiana uh, Jones did you know, it. You know what normal people what, do for fun. So she was in a good place. Yeah, totally. Okay. She was, she was back in, in government housing. And right. And doing that with the only thing she's doing with her spare time is that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's fun. She collects probably, some stamps or something. She right? probably puts them on the wall. Most, very, very positive place. Yeah, start these stitching, are like, These are things. death stamps. They're so much cooler than regular stamps. I guess. I guess if someone does this something cool, then it'd be worth it. Stephen continued his rudderless existence until the late '80s, when he became fascinated with the emerging new field of criminal profiling. Oh fuck! What? The science had evolved to the point where profilers were a regular part of casework, often able to use clues to determine the suspect's approximate age, sex, race, class, profession, and level of education. So that is their specific thing. So when you're like in the department, you're like, we need to figure out who the fuck this is. You go to the profiling department. Yeah, and this is this has really popped up more in the 80s. Like it, the, the idea had been around for a long time, but as science and uh, jails kind of came together over time. Yeah. They had more access to these people and were able to sort of build profiles off of thousands of hours of interviews and records and stuff. Mm-hmm. So they started to see commonalities. Well, that's how you know, like, a- killing animals is like a serial killer thing. It's, it's, a, it's part of profiling. Yeah, because yeah, if, cause if you didn't have a profile to go that, you would have no idea that that was weird. You'd be yeah. like, oh, well, that's, I mean, that's just a Sunday. That's kind, yeah. What you're saying, though, is kind of true. Because in the old days, like, the culture was different. And, like, like, oh, like, shit. I guess kids do that. Yeah. You remember that time when it was totally oh, he's normal be a good hunter. to no, crucify like, a squirrel? You can imagine, like, 300 years ago, you'd be like, he's a brute. The 70s. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a brute. He's going to survive the winter, that boy. Thank goodness he likes to just rip those animals apart. We can count on him to hunt. You know what I mean? Like, you could see that, like, 500 years ago, right? And then all of a sudden now you're like, yeah. Why are you ripping that bird's wings off, you fucking psycho? You know, it's different. Th- times change. It's Culture the, changes. The holy trinity of uh, setting fires, killing animals, wetting your bed. Mm. If you know a kid who does all three, he's going to be a serial killer. Run. Yeah, yeah. Or don't, don't get him help. Him. Get him help real quick. <laughs> Never go with him to the woods to see something cool. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Hey, you wanna you wanna come see something that I found? Uh, sure. Yeah, wh- 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 why are your pants all wet? Uh, no reason. Just uh, you know, I was making water balloons, and they and they weren't that sour. Kind of, you know, water balloons go sour sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, cool. where are these water balloons? Oh, um, 
I used them to put out the fire that I lit on the side of the house because it was burning, you know? Do you want to just hang out inside our house? No, 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 That's the part where I'd be like, all right, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to. No. Oh, yeah. you sound so cool, mister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where my brother gets killed. Yeah. I'm like, I'm st- I'll stay here. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> All right, Tim. We should go for a walk. Could that's, you breathe harder, please? That's <laughs> fucking terrifying. Good to think people have had to face that in their life. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like that's how you dirty talk to On the Mrs. strength of some very success, f- public successes, criminal profilers began to pop up in a flood of books, movies, and TV shows. Most famous of these, the 1988 novel-turned-film The Silence of the Lambs. Oh, fuck yeah. That movie terrified movie. me. Well, you know, Red Dragon was written before Silence of the Lambs. Sure. But it didn't hit as hard but then Silence Lambs came out, and because the profiler angle brought into it, and that's what made it go kaboom. Mm. So what age did you see Silence of the Lambs at? Um, it's one of the few movies I have seen. Uh, I saw it at, I was, I think, 17, 18. Oh, yeah, that's, okay. the, that's the whole point of his podcast, that, Spoil the Beans, is that Asan has never seen any movies. That's yeah. awesome. And, and so Derek just describes the movie at him. You yeah. Just, you just stayed virginated for movies? Yeah, and there's some big movies. When is this coming out? Soon, very soon, the next couple weeks. The next couple weeks? All right, yeah. so that means we probably already dropped our Ferris Bueller episode. That's the one that's coming out this Monday, but it'll be out by the time this is out. You so never like, saw that's Ferris Bueller? Never seen Ferris Bueller. Jesus. We've already done Men in Black. Titanic was our first episode. Even I've we, seen those, and I'm just like living Rudy. under a rock. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen any of them. And Derek describes them to me, and he just sings all the songs and does all the characters. No, someone hasn't seen, like, the apples and bananas of movies. I know. Yes. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. he just listed off fucking Ferris Bueller's and Titanic. I, just wanted to, just like, I, just, I didn't know if the context <laughs> made sense to you, so I just really wanted to clarify it. Have you, has, have you just not seen popular movies, but you've seen a lot of, like, obscure movies? or have you not? No, seen... I just haven't seen movies. Wow. Whatever. What, sometimes I come across some shit, and I'll watch it. And so some some of the movies I've watched this year, you. they've never hooked you though. Where like well, I gotta I see more. Like, oh, I gotta see more. No, I've just watched what I've watched. That's interesting. I love that though. That's great that you're not an addict like the rest of us. Well, I can't stop. I can't stop. MacGruber every day, all day. Blazing Saddles all day, every day. Spaceballs, sure. Yeah, I can't stop. I don't know how you can stop. While most of the public <laughs> viewed criminal profilers from behind the wall of entertainment, Steven saw it as an opportunity. His criminal and psychiatric record made him unemployable, but did not prevent him from pursuing a degree. He enrolled at Bradford College. So he's just like, fuck it, I'll at least go to school for it and take it from there. Yeah. Threaten someone's life if they don't hire me. I mean, that's that's how I did it. Right? How do you think I got the job at the comedy store? That's terrifying. I was like, if you guys don't give me a job here, I will slash all your tires. Wow. And everyone's like, I ain't scared of you. And they're like, I will wear purple every day. And way, to, like, way, to, no! way to aim low with your threats. Way to, <laughs> <laughs> I will kill all of you unless I get this minimum wage job. <laughs> <laughs> But it worked. Unless you let the point me mark is, famous people's cars, yeah. I will murder each and every one of you. Yeah. The point is, it worked. It did work. With the help of his probation officer, oh no, he enrolled in Bradford College, began to study and become a criminal psychiatrist. With the help of his probation officer, he got public housing within walking distance of the school and the fun little town that popped up around it. But Stephen still cut himself off from the world around him. Once again, he grew paranoid, imagining that his fellow students were plotting against him. In August of 89, he was caught carrying an air pistol and was given 100 days community service for his parole violation. In May of 1991, he walked past four young female students and oh, heard a... an imaginary insult. I was going to say, this is, this is not going to be good. He pulled out his knife. Oh, no. Put it under oh, one girl's Lord. chin. Oh, good Jesus God. Christ. And asked, why are you, what are you laughing at, little girl? Isn't she, is, wait, isn't he in England? When he say, "What are you laughing at?" What are you laughing girl? at, little girl? <laughs> he had this really. I've seen some tapes of him uh, of, his, of his interviews. Yeah, and he had a really like Joker Heath Ledger's Joker style laugh. Oh, that's so what happens when you stay terrifying. inside your whole life? <laughs> that's all you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never learn how to laugh properly. No, or when to do it. Like, well, hey, tell, hey, can you tell me a joke? Yeah, yeah. Did you either one about the <laughs> ha? Did I get? Did I do it right? I didn't even get to the, you know the end of the <laughs> joke. I mean, but it was the, fu- the the fun part was very funny. Yes, but you haven't heard the fun part. <laughs> oh, okay, only the, the, begin- the, the, the setup. Okay, then, then keep going. So then this chicken, he cro- <laughs> yes, he crosses the road, right? And he, as a chicken, he's wondering, you know, why? <laughs> Fuck you. Never mind the bloody joke. What if that guy was just the entire audience at your show? Oh, God. that's a, that I think would, that's a nightmare I've had. You know, you're really starting to get picky if you're going to start, you know, picking certain kinds of laughter that you like, Slayton. You just be happy with whatever. Okay, so you're you're on stage. You hit a dope punchline, and then you hear And I whole, says to her, that's you, my pussy. <laughs> 
the audience laughs like that? Even the yeah, ladies? The whole audience laughs, <laughs>, laughs like that. Would you finish the set? If the booker of the club is laughing as well. Like that? Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. I'm Just sharpening a knife in the back. <laughs> oh, God. That sounds like a nightmare for a comedian. Yeah, that sounds like, like they're going to murder me after the set. Yeah, that sounds terrifying. This is We've a, all done the shows where we assumed that was going to happen. That's the next oh, season of American Horror Story is a comedy club. <laughs> It's not even haunted. It's just the day to day of a comedy. Club. Oh, yeah. It's really cutthroat, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Five days later, the father of one of the girls confronted Stephen, so he pulled the knife again. Hey, you won't mess your, with me. That's oh. your go-to. I can tell that's this guy's go-to. Where's the milk? It just you know, yeah. the milk is spoiled or whatever. This is pulls a knife on the fridge. Who ate my lunch? <laughs> or if you're like, hey, could you help me open up this Amazon package? He pulls out. He pulls out. This is a knife. Oh, he's Australian now. Just for that that bit. <laughs> Stephen was charged with possessing a weapon in public and two counts of affray, which means fighting in public and causing a disturbance. God fucking the British. He didn't get right? the terms for real. For he real didn't get in British. trouble for assault and uh, attempted like murder. No, no, no you put mean a floppy wobble. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Your Honor. Do they have a judge second like that? degree floppy wobble? <laughs> Your Honor, who is wearing a George Washington headpiece. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little, little bit of flobby wobble, and we we order you to uh, let him go back to the sir, town. My client, my client is guilty of flobby, but not wobble. You don't understand the court here. Everyone is guilty of flobby wobble just by being alive. He was sentenced to two years in jail, where he just got worse. A psychiatrist wrote that Stephen was strongly attracted to the idea of killing other people. So what? Wow, what, what a surprise. Oh, wow. <laughs> holy shit. How does that guy ever get out of jail? Like, well, how do you go, know. like, he's better now. I'd how, be like, I, I'm, so not judging, I'm not judging this guy, but keep him the fuck locked up. Oh, no, I'm judging him. <laughs> I don't know whatever psychosis or crazy situations Asan. turned him. Asan, he was a child Show at one time. Show some empathy. Time. He was sorry. a little baby. Show some empathy to, the com- to people who lack empathy and and dissect animals. I'm not of. saying you need to go hug the guy, I'm, and I'm not saying we should release him. I, I'm saying lock him up for good, but I, 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 you know, it's not his fault that he's a psycho, right? He's Guards like, noticed that he exhibited an apparent erotic thrill when discussing savage crimes. Yeah, there's like yeah. everything on this guy's checklist. I'm like, can you just strap him down again? Like, another strap. I assumed he was hard every time he pulled the knife. Can we get this guy tighter underwear, please? For yeah. fuck's sake, every time he talks about a murder, just he's boning up and looking me right in the eye. Good God. Well, at least they're gonna at least they're gonna put him back on the street, as I can tell by the number of pages you have left. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> sure he's coming back. Maybe he just goes on a murdering rampage inside his jail. He became obsessed with famous criminals like the East End gangsters, the Cray twins, the D Cup oh, poisoner. They're Cray. <laughs> And the Yorkshire Ripper. You knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Well, we've talked about the Cray Trends before in the episode about that Scottish gangster whose son was a douchebag. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll, oh, they'll come up again, bro. Oh, they're uh, cray. the Cray Trends are Cray. cray. Oh, they're they're cray. cray Cray. They're Cray. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the Cray Cray Twins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a different. They're different. Yeah. My bad. His yeah. favorite, There's Hella Cray Twins, too. They're, they're Hella Cray. His favorite was the Yorkshire Ripper, who had murdered 13 people in the same neighborhood where Stephen now lived. Jesus oh. H. Christ. Oh, so he had a hometown hero. He had a hometown hero. And, and the Ripper was. And the and the and the theme of all rippers, a prostitute murderer. Was did they catch this one? Yeah, the Yorkshire Ripper got got caught. Okay, because he put up he put up double the numbers of Jack. No, he put up good numbers, bro. Yeah, that dude was putting in work. He was the, he was always he was the first one in the gym in the morning. Yeah, last, last one, one out, out in the night. evening. Mm-hmm. Oh man, you guys made me want to bust out my serial killer baseball cards. Yeah, I the mean, stats are incredible. I got a Jeffrey Dahmer again. It's like, please come on, we all have Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, Dahmer. it's just it's just we get it. He's the most popular one, right? I just, I just buy Serial Killer popular. baseball cards for the gum that comes with it. Ooh. I actually have a hologram first edition Ed Gein. Ooh. Yeah. Got nice. it foil wrapped? Yeah. Got it in one of those booster packs. I got a John Wayne Gacy autographed in paint and blood. Oh, wow. Lucky. He told the psychiatric nurse <laughs> in the jail, quote, what he, the Yorkshire Ripper, did was nothing. I'm, I would do better than that. That's literally what he said. That's oh. it. That's probably what he sounded like. That's right. Jesus camp. fucking. Okay, seriously. I'm going to yeah. outdo him. Yeah. How yeah. fucking did this guy ever get out of me. jail? What I'm fucking mean? furious right What's now. What's the problem? I'm going to throw the table over like Scarface. I'm so pissed. How did he get out of jail after making statements like that? You're like, okay, well, we're just going to well, keep no, you strapped he, but up. But he did do some nice things in jail. For example, he also suggested exterminating a mentally disabled inmate. That's a that's okay. A Hitler and kept thing. a list of staff he wanted to kill. Also, okay. so that, he's he's pretty balanced. Can you exterminate one person? Is that an extermination? I mean, you can exterminate one raccoon or possum or whatever that's in like living under your thing. Isn't that from Mortal Kombat? Kill a raccoon. Exterminate him. <laughs> Finish. That's finish. The no, nurse that's, wrote. A no, memo. it means to exterminate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exterminate him. After I come, I always go. I'm exterminated. <sighs> 
Let's have a nap. The nurse wrote a memo warning, quote, he openly talks about the pleasures of killing and maiming people. And her boss was like, that's great. I'm going to go golfing. Uh, You know, just uh, take care of the place while I'm gone. When he speaks on these subjects, he does so with the enthusiasm and air of a person recounting an enjoyable sexual experience. Okay, I'm fucking scared. So the authorities did the only thing that made sense. They jerked him off. Let him out. He was released after serving just over half of his sentence. Fuck what? Yeah. what? Are you serious? At least this time he got over half instead yeah, of just half. How are we? These, these people must be held accountable. What do you mean? What year is it? It's 80s? Yeah, They're still alive, it, right? Yeah. If there's anything about the justice system, <laughs> the, the those people will... are held accountable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How does it got, how does how does that go on your notes on your file and then they're like I think he's ready to get out there and start delivering pizzas again. <laughs> yeah, send him out. He's recuperated well, I mean, or whatever he, they call look, it. He's ambitious. He's trying. He wants to break records. So I mean, that's already a, a quality personality trait. Yes, You're yes. too optimistic. He knows what he wants. To, he knows what he wants to do. Yeah, absolutely. How, how many people do you know that aren't murdering people that have no purpose? That's right. Okay. He's creative. Like he's got different ways he wants to go about it. Mm-hmm. You guys have talked me into it, man. I'd like to be his big brother in the program. <laughs> Within months, he was back before a judge for possessing a knife in public he got probation okay so he's not doing that bad of illegal stuff he's just being a wacky dipshit he's a, he's, he's i just, mean holding a knife to a girl's throat you know it's pretty oh, yeah. pretty bad do you remember yeah, that I was episode just tricking of you guys. where kramer held a knife to a girl's throat and everyone was like kramer <laughs> that didn't happen so i do remember that you almost yeah. tricked me yeah that didn't happen in 1997 he enrolled at leeds college to pursue his psychology degree for the first time Stephen began to socialize hey he frequented this, nightclubs like is, Rio's. I think he's hunting. I'm just going to be honest right now. Steven is looking no, for. No, 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 no. He's Why? Why would like you say friends. that? Why? He's, what? Br- he's branching what out. What part of this story up until now makes you think that he's up just to something? Butterflies something. just opening his wings. Yeah. He was he was a caterpillar for so long. Mm-hmm. And he just went into a mental institution jail cocoon, and now he's out and now, ready to ready to fly. This is very, you know, ABC Silence of the Lambs with the cocooning and the, the moths. He frequented nightclubs like Rio's, a basement music venue where drunk students watched up-and-coming goth and hardcore bands. He didn't drink much or dance, preferring the upper balcony where he could look down on the partiers. I ne- never trust someone that hangs out with you while you're partying and doesn't drink. Right it's- now he just seems like a character from Buffy. <laughs> he's just wearing yeah. he's just, black just, lipstick. Yeah, sit in the corner. Oh, that's well. That's what he's, he began dressing in black jeans, black t-shirt, heavy black calf length boots, and a long black leather raincoat. Ha! <laughs> You're not golf enough. No. But seriously though, this this guy's he's hunting right now. No, no, no. He's just he's, he's fine. Just, he's fine. He, can be part of the he grew his hair long yeah. and flicked it back with baby oil. He's just standing above the party, not drinking or dancing, just watching people by himself. He's yeah, fine. Just noticing that the the higher up you get above them, the more the people look like insects. Yeah, and then which some is people, totally normal. Some people people don't pay attention to and are kind of stragglers, and no one would really mm-hmm. know if they were gone for a little yeah. bit. But he's fine. He's just observing the human condition, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He, he always wore sunglasses with small, round lenses, even indoors. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you didn't tell me he was cool as shit now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I forgot to mention that. He loved his mysterious man in black image and took tons of duck-lipped selfies before they were a thing. Oh, my God. Oh, so he's ahead of his time as well. Dude, he's an innovator. Yeah. He's an innovator with this goals. This should be a he's warning fine. to people that are into selfies. You're like, you know who invented the condition. selfie? A fucking serial killer, I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, I mean, that means he turned a camera <laughs> in on himself. Before long, that's so creepy. Hey, the guy from Silent Lamb too, dancing in the mirror. I'd fuck me. Everybody that takes a selfie is basically yeah, saying, to be fair, "I'd to, fuck me." To be totally me. fair, wouldn't you fuck you? Like, I would fuck me. Are you kidding me? I'm grateful for people to- having sex with me. I would me. totally fuck me. You're fucking gross. Are you if serious? I had a time not, machine, not that you're gross. Like if I had a time someone, machine, that's what I would do. You would fuck yourself. I wouldn't stop Hitler. I wouldn't invest in Microsoft. I would just fuck me. That's so disgusting. That's it's just no. It's just yourself. It's, look, you don't mean masturbating. Who, you mean a physical who else, incarnation. Who you else? mean a physical replica of yourself. You would go up to and be like, who you know, can I'll match suck that this guy's raw dick? sexuality other than me? No, that's. Uh, I'm not telling you how to be because that's some whole new kind of uh, gender thing. Are you telling me that you I guys, just want to fuck myself? Are you telling me you guys never masturbate, looking yourself deep in the eyes in a mirror that? You hold no. in your other hand. You are very yeah, weird. No, 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 no. no. I can't never do that. that? No, you guys no, are no, very no. weird. Bro. I need to call Dr. Drew and Bro, ask him a I quick question yeah. about my friend. But I do masturbate to the thought of you doing that. Thanks, man. So I, I can see how you'd fuck you. got you. my stories. Huh? I will never yeah. masturbate yeah. again after this episode and what Slayton has just told me. No, no, no. But next time you masturbate, just picture that. It's going to take like weeks of me trying not to masturbate <laughs> and being feeling dead inside because of what we said here. And then it's going to come back even harder. Before long, Stephen was known in the area as the Lizard Man. Oh, that's really what you want to be known as. Yeah, that's a solid nickname. I got nickname round glasses and a nickname called the Lizard. Stemmed from his habit of taking his three-foot-long pets for walks around his apartment complex. 
Using a leash and a leather harness, he showed off his Nile monitor lizards, which are deadly predators that can grow up to seven feet long. And he had a bunch of them in his house? He had two. That's too, too many, really, actually. <laughs> are they, are they going to help eat bodies? He kept them and his boa constrictors in large glass tanks in the living room of his one-bedroom apartment. I'm Good God! I'm feed you to my lizards. Which he heated with lamps to simulate their tropical environment. Oh, my God. That would be nice, though, right? In the cold English day, you're like, you know, at least his house is warm. Sometimes the lizard man would bring a satchel to the clubs, carrying one of them inside to show girls. You that- know, you got you to gotta show them what you got. <laughs> I want a guy with a lizard. <laughs> 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 oh my god, is that your lizard? And this is where the snake... No, it's my snake. Oh, hell yeah, can I pet it? Oh, here you go. It's- Ow, it bit my finger! See how it's wrapping around you? Ow, it really hurts, my let finger's it, bleeding. Let it do that. Mister, your, your lizard, it bit my finger! Accept it. Can you even hear me? Accept it. Hey ladies, it's two for one on mice to feed that lizard tonight. Head over to the bar <laughs> and see what you can get. Dude, lizard's shit too, so if you have a big lizard, you can imagine the size of those cigarette butts those things will be laying out. Ugh. His favorite time of day, of course, dusk. 420. Was feeding time. I, I like his sunset. <laughs> 420. 420. You're like, oh, he's a pot smoker? That explains everything. <laughs> he's bro, you ever seen like when a lizard just fucking looks at you, dog? And you're like, bro, I think we are lizards, man. Mm-hmm. You just smoked like, some DMT. You can see the universe in my iguana's belly. Like, you're the monitor lizard. I'm like, are you monitoring me or am I monitoring you, bro? <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> He loved to invite friends and neighbors to see him take mice from his six by two foot rodent pen and dangle them over his pets before they ripped the rodents to shreds. That's uh, that's kind of just a... he's just so hard. And there I can is feel no it. one who has a snake who doesn't do this. And it's always weird. Is there anyone who knows a snake who doesn't like, dude, you want to see? Bro, I've seen, a snake, see I've seen snakes feed before and, and it, it, it feels awkward because you're like, you know, it's natural that they're just eating meat just like we are. But at the same time, like to see anything die is just like a miserable. Yes, but I've, I've never dark. met a snake, a snake owner who wasn't like, bro, do you want to watch me feed him? You're like, talking about them all having like a kink to them? Where they're like, they're, they're, all of them are like slightly too excited that's about weird. feeding the snake. Yeah, yeah that is I a don't, weird I don't associate thing. with snake people, so I have no idea. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I keep it above board with the people I hang out with. I'm ferret people only, bro. Oh, man. I met a ferret recently, and ferrets are assholes. In San Diego, by any chance? Yes. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, that ferret. He's a fucking dick. Yep. I thought, yo, I thought we were going to be friends. What are you fucking talking about, guys? How, How do I not know what you're talking about? We both about? know which we ferret we're talking about. Ferret. Yeah. yeah. What are you, yo. There's a local ferret you guys are friends oh, with? Absolutely. How do I not know him? And he steals shit. Because I thought we were going to be friends. I thought we were going to see each other, and he was going to hop on my shoulder, and we were going to, like, find fucking, go find treasure nope. or do whatever ferret shit. And uh, no, he just stole my wallet. Yeah, we gotta do an episode on this ferret. And he's a liar too. He's like, bro, I know great microbreweries we can go to in the area. He doesn't know any ferret. You don't know shit. Yeah, Bartholomew Thomas Johannesson was born in (laughs) Georgetown. Like, like, he was a ferret. His yeah, I'm just joking. Meaty. During one of these feedings, he entertained his guests by taking a baby rat from the cage and putting it into his mouth. The then, guy, or the, he put it, the, wait, 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 wait. Into his own mouth. Stephen, Stephen put takes, it into his mouth. Takes a baby rat out and dangles it, puts it in his mouth. Then, like a snake, he swallowed it whole. Oh, man, we got to stop coming to those dinner parties, man. <laughs> is this guy this... getting laid by this? Our chick's like, oh, my God, it is a a lizard. He thought it was funny. His guests did him. not. Yeah, dude, I don't, we came last week, and it was way weird. I don't know why we came back this week, man. Yeah, we, like, keep on doing this. And he doesn't have any real friends, so no one's there to explain. Like, he's just a little trippy. I keep thinking he's not going to eat the rat whole, and then he keeps doing it. Yeah, I thought I for sure thought last week was just a fever dream I had. I wasn't. (laughs) I'm going to throw up this fucking lizard fucking barf. (laughs) He also had a small library of books, journals, and other documents. Weirdo! Oh. To murder. Some visitors found it unsettling until he explained his pursuit of a degree and goal to become a forensic psychiatrist. At this point, how old is he? Um, let's see. This is around 97. He, he was born, born in 69. 69. Yeah, so late 20s. Late 20s. All yeah. right. He's he's about the age where people first start killing. Oh, that's so is weird. Is that part of it? Profiler? 20, 27, 28 is when a lot of so, serial killers first kill. So weird, man. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's also when a lot of great musicians die. And so here my theory is that when a the great musician killers? dies, mm-hmm. his soul turns and goes into a serial killer. Yeah. And then that's why they get so good so, at it. So what I'm saying is right now Steven has to shit or get off the pot. He's got to kill somebody or fucking... got to shit that baby rat out or, or get find off the a pot. new profession. More difficult to explain, 
were the decorations. What did he have? <laughs> what did this guy have in his house? On Posters one wall, from Silence of the Lambs on every fucking wall. On one wall, three samurai swords, small, medium, and large. On the other... Is that two, that weird? You looked at me like that was weird. I mean, he has I the guess, Goldilocks. He's like, this one's too big. This one's too small. But if I had three oh, samurai fuck. swords, I would get them small, medium, and large. Yeah, yeah right? That's yeah, fair. Yeah, that's that's like normal. t-shirts. Just have a couple different versions. Yeah, I'd swallow my rat and play with the big <laughs> the big sword. <laughs> You're learning a lot of this episode, kid. I'm really enjoying watching you grow. Yeah. You're really maturing, son. On the other wall, two crossbows. The jaguar and the skeleton, both designed for hunting, were capable of shooting black shaft aluminum bolts at over 200 miles an hour. Still, this just sounds like the apartment of a nerdy guy that goes to the Renaissance Fair. Yeah, this sounds like someone who really likes Alex Jones. I, like, I, know, pe- I know people... <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I know people that like... Are Don't just like, you I'm go a- disparaging my fans there, Sonamon. <laughs> I've got documents to prove that every Alex Jones fan is a good, upstanding American. <laughs> who has all these things on his wall. Of course. The Constitution <laughs> protects your right to have any sort of weapons. Samurai swords, throwing stars, crossbows, all of which I sell on my website. Use the promo code CONSPIRACY and you can get 10% off these and any MREs or other basement bunker type things you're trying to get. Uh, I can't even spell conspiracy. What's the promo code again? Man, I can't even spell MRE. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just an abbreviation, kid. Where the we were fuck? just saying, I was just saying that this guy's fucking oh, yeah, got the weird, has, he, this weird apartment. But you're like, I I know people that are like Renaissance Fair kind of dorks. Like I'm a blacksmith, and like they kind of collect this kind of stuff. They have lizards. They have a lot of like you know weird weapons mm-hmm. and like posters of like dorky ass movies. What you know and, like, is a lot of murderers. Well, I don't I don't know a lot of them you anymore. Of I have known people like this. I don't think I know any murderers. You mostly know murderers. That's weird. I feel like I just know like Renaissance Fair people. You know, despite the weird collection of reptiles, weapons, and murder lit. Stephen was also known for keeping his place perfectly immaculate. That's insane. Mm-hmm. That's an insane thing to have that many lizards and to keep it also very clean. Well, you probably, it's probably all or nothing though. If you, like I said, lizards are they're taking huge nasty dumps. Even small li- little lizards, they poop out those little cigarette butts. Why I have lizards that are just like they're just gnarly. <laughs> you do not have lizards <laughs> just for the dumps, bro. <laughs> just so you can, you can be like, hey, would you like a cigarette to people? And they touch the lizard poop. You're like, just joking, his lizard shit. Stephen's apartment came with a view. Of the town's red light district. Oh, oh yeah. my let's god! Put this, let's put this unstable guy around people that no one really investigates Steve, when Steve, they die. Wow. Yeah. With his late hours, it did not take him long to strike up friendships with many of the girls. Oh, so he's becoming friends with them. So maybe he's not so bad, huh? He often stood on the street with them, offering cigarettes and conversation. Cigarettes? Like, yeah, that one was listed. Wait. Poop. Did he... <laughs> <laughs> and he never has sex with them? Not at the moment. Okay. Well, when he does, will you tell us so we can start jagging off? He took on a sort of paternal role, sometimes See, inviting the girls up for drugs and the feeding. That's really weird. Huh. That's way weirder to me. You've never adopted a prostitute like a, like a highway? No. Wait, never. I explain how he did this? Uh, well, he paid the city $10 a month, and he was able to put his name on a prostitute. That's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, if you saw, they, they, they have signs on the back that says sponsored by. Yeah. A lot of them are sponsored by, like, McDonald's. Like the shit. cleanup crew is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I, 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 what are they? I adopted this highway. <laughs> <laughs> this blowjob brought to you by Blockbuster. I know we're out of business, but she will be too soon. <laughs> wow, that was brutal. When one of the girls was tragically murdered, he figured out who did it and gave the man a horrible beating in the street before he could be arrested. Oh, wow. That went way differently than I thought. Yeah. When one of the girls were murdered, I thought nope, the suspicions turned on Steven. Can I no, ask you? he found out who did it, and he beat the shit out of the guy, and the cops arrested him. Did he, by any chance, beat the shit out of a guy who didn't actually do it? No, the guy he definitely did, did it, and oh, okay. he definitely beat the fuck I wasn't out. sure if there was a twist coming. I thought maybe there could be a twist. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for this guy to break. Somehow, he found Even a more. series of girlfriends at the local clubs. Like, what if Slayton's kind of throwing us off, and they're like, he's Man, a bank robber. This dude found a series of girlfriends? Sometimes more than one at a time. Man, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong. <laughs> That's... I, <laughs> You're not weird enough. You're in the yeah. middle. You're like you're like a cool dude. You need more dude, swords, bro. Cool uh, you know yeah. what? I'll, I'll invest in some swords. Where's your Where's your reptile case that you carry around? I didn't know I had to do that. How do you pick up chicks without a reptile case, bro? Oh man, this is see. My parents had a range marriage. I haven't picked up any of these dating tips. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're dating and they just, just like you just you marry who we fucking tell and they you. They just give yeah. you a lizard automatically in an arranged marriage. There's no courtship. Yeah, lizard. I never. There's... Yeah, I never have to. I just, I just. They've always had a lizard. The first. Uh, he, and he you'll met... always have a lizard with you. He met Lee, a pretty you. blonde at Rio's. The oh, first man. time she came over to his place, she was off put by a large three by three foot photograph he had on the wall of himself. 
Yeah, who wouldn't be? That's like if Robert De Niro had the taxi driver poster in his room. You'd be like, uh, what the fuck's going on over here, dude? The first time he came over to her place, oh, she was equally guy. put off when he asked to check her bed, then sniffed the sheets. Oh. He was making sure that she changed her sheets after whatever last guy she slept with. Oh. What, this guy thinks he can smell pheromones? You That's... can't. For some reason, she, she dated him for eight months. Yeah, she kept going. Oh, she had no self-esteem, and no one better was hitting on her. Probably when she finally broke it off, he responded by sliding a book about the Son of Sam killer through her mail slot. What does that mean? Oh, thank you. I need to read more? <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, he was just being like, look, I know that this, I, yeah. I know that this ended kind of weird, but I just want to give you a parting gift about how I think of you. Does that, is that, does that track? Is that a good serial killer to, to give after a breakup? I mean that's what I've that's what I've given as a breakup gift every time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like right. I, like I mean that and flowers. Again, again, I don't know these courting Black rules. Roses I'm learning time. I'm learning I'm learning all these dating rules We're right here now. To help you out, man. All right, cool. Next, okay. So when I break up with someone, son of Sam. If anyone's Got looking it. to date Asan Ahmad, you can find him on Twitter at M R J B A H M A D. Dude. Tweet him right now while, while this episode's Dude, going on. Mr. J.B. Ahmad. Yeah, stop, just stop what you're doing. Send him a clip pic and like take it from there. He's, a, he's an attractive young man. He's polite. He's respectful. But he will throw that D He'll hard. throw that D Absolutely. hard. Absolutely. And I'm willing to get a lizard. Yeah, he totally will. And you can pick the lizard. <laughs> yes. That's an important That's part. That's so of this. important in a relationship. It's you like, gotta let well, your partner pick the lizard. Too. I let the woman pick the lizard. Yeah, let let her pick. It's like it's like mm-hmm. the remote control thing. Like let exactly. her pick the lizard. Okay, okay. Let, everyone Again, knows that. I need to take by notes. The way. <laughs> in 1998, he began dating Zeta after she answered a, low- a Jewish grandfather. Z E T A. Oh, what time are you gonna pick me up? And then it was Bubby. Jesus Christ, Zadie. It's yeah. fucking you. You don't know. You, Pick the restaurant. Don't ask me to fucking pick it. Then tell me no. He began. I just didn't know. <laughs> you know, I was hungry, but I just. Hey, and how much was it to park? He began dating Zeta after she answered a Lonely Hearts ad in the paper. Do you have to keep ripping the the, the wings <laughs> off that bird? Ad. It's so loud. I'm fucking tired. On their first date, he gave her a gift, a right. photograph of himself. What a fucking douche. Nice. Besides being a murdering asshole, he should have... He's not a murdering asshole yet. I'm going to play future cop and accuse him. Yeah. (laughs) Minority Report. I'm Tom Hanks, or whoever was the star of that movie. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. There you go. I just want to point out... One of the successful Toms, yes. (laughs) That we are in one of these stories where you guys are kind of making some predictions. So I just want to point out that, like, since this story seems to be pretty obvious where it's going, it's not going. It's not going to go there. It's. I mean, maybe it's going exactly where you think. He's going to rob banks with this shit. Turns out he turns out to be a very successful fucking parliament member, and he's just siphoning money from people. Rob Gronkowski. He won three Super Bowl rings. (laughs) He didn't declare fruit when he crossed the border. This guy's an (laughs) asshole. (laughs) On their. Oh yeah. He uh, somehow the photograph didn't scuttle the relationship. At first, Zeta assumed that he was gay, given his style of dress, voice, and mannerisms. But the couple had regular sex three or four times a week. Each tryst would last for hours due to his inability to climax. Mm, he didn't have a knife, did he? Yeah, no, that's the big problem. That is the big He's problem. Like, like, babe, baby, you just keep making me leave the knives in the other room. Maybe he's into tantric sex. Harrison Ford was. God, so that's like 12 hours of sex a week. Ugh. That's, that's a job. That sounds fucking I, I don't awesome. Even, I don't even want 15 minutes of sex a week. That's Give a me job. 10. Give me, a, give me a solid 10. Does that sound Please. awesome, not coming for 12 hours? Does that it's sound awesome? With I'm kind of sad after I come. I'm like, that's it? I, I, it's like that. It's like Sundays. You know, you're like, the weekend's over already? Hold like, on, you're sad? You're not ashamed like a proper American? No. Yeah, fucking, you don't feel like you're sh- like, I come just like letting those, your parents down? I come like yeah. those, those E-bombs world you videos. I go, you don't, ah! and like all the powers fly out of my eyes, mouth, and fingertips. You come, you don't write a confessional letter talking about all the things you did wrong that week just to make up for the fact that you sinned against God? No, I am not that Man, you're weird, dude. Not that Super kind of weird, You're mad weird. Call me weird, but I'm coming hard, y'all. She was also weirded out by his phobias, including his fear of insects crawling in his ears, which caused him to sleep with cotton stuffed in the canals. Oh, that is oh, a creepy yeah. ass fear. Specific phobias are very weird, right? Dude, They're that is a very weird, weird, weird one. Insects yeah. crawling into his ears. Do you, know, do you guys know about that thing where people are, they don't like porous stuff, things coming through porous things? It's on Reddit. There's like, if you're like porous and like worms come out of it, they're like tripped out by porous shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot Dude, what it's called. It's the same kind of thing, though. Like things going in your ears, things coming out your pores. Go on with your story, He lady lied boo. and told her he lived with his parents. They dated for two years before she learned about the Reptile Crossbow Sword Murder Museum. That was, wait, 
Oh, so they were going to his parents' house because he never wanted to bring her home to his actual place. No, they just go to her place. Just go to her place. Yeah. Oh. Asan, Asan knows what's up. Yeah. So so he No, I'm picked up dating pretty this quickly. Guy's game in the last so, 10 minutes. Yeah, dude. In the last this guy, 10 minutes this guy's game is since so we've good. started Asan's crush puss four times is, since the last paragraph. Oh yeah, this table's black. I can't see under it. Maybe he's getting head right now. I don't exactly. know. Yes. This guy is so good at crushing puss that he actually says, Hey, I live with my parents as his that's what he's faking. That's yeah. his that's his that's his lie to make himself wow. look better. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's just like. Thank first... you for concisely saying yeah. what I was trying to spit out. I was yeah. trying to get my part of my brain to just say it. Just say it, goddammit. The yes. moment she finally saw his place, she knew it was time to leave. Yeah. Fucking... She told him she was sick, so he would take her home, and then she broke it off over the telephone. Of that's course. smart. That's yeah. smart. You don't break it off there. While yeah. having a gun aimed at the, at the door. Yeah. yeah. She's like, if he comes in through there, I'll fucking blast him while I'm talking to but him. Then, she gave, then he gave her some H.H. H. Holmes literature. <laughs> 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 Next was Amanda, who fell in love with him despite his large collection of photos of the butts of his ex-girlfriends. That sounds awesome. I'd like to see the yeah, records I mean, of that. I mean, I'm, I'm all for that one. Yeah. That changed when he asked her to come to court as um, for moral support. This guy's got so many interesting fetishes that you're like, I think he's a crazy killer. Wait, like, why is he in court? He's He'd been dude. charged with pouring boiling water on the stomach of an ex while she slept. What the fuck? What an asshole. He told the court that his ex, Diane, was trying to get revenge for a bad breakup. When the jury ruled in his favor, he celebrated by getting a tattoo. Diane lost war. What the final the straw for Amanda was when he admitted to her that he, quote, wanted to be bigger than the Yorkshire Ripper and planned this since he was a teenager. It took her six more months to finally break it off. God. Wow. And she survived those six months, though. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm happy about yeah, that. Yeah, but like, that's like a thing. There are like a, women that are just into serial killers. Yeah. That's like a very big demographic. Is it the motivated? Is it the Bonnie and Clyde like you and me against the world, baby? I'll murder and rape. Oh, that's you? like a huge thing. If that's you, scary. Mm-hmm. If that's you, terrifying. If you if you want to if you want to receive love letter upon love letter, become a serial killer, go to jail. That shit comes in you constantly, bro. Constantly. Do you need people to care about you? Dog? I know. I remember seeing like that. Like the Night Stalker had a wife, and you're like, yeah. Wait, wait, people wait. people are attracted to power. Ugh. After that was Kathy, That's a red-headed power. prison officer. Marry a guy that owns his own business or something. Jesus. She lived 20 miles away with her two dogs, which he hated. Oh, so God, he got her dogs to, are going to get gonna murdered. murder the dogs? He got her to mix some bad medications, and, sent her, and she had to go to the emergency room. When she returned, he informed her that there had been a break-in, and the only thing stolen was her dogs. She believed him and moved into the Reptile Weapon Murder Museum. She what moved the in? Fuck? I like that sentence, by the way, Slayton. That was a beautiful yeah, sentence. Yeah, what Thanks, reptile uh, uh, weapon, weapon murder, murder museum? museum yeah. yeah, and just nonchalantly, uh, she believed that shit. The, yeah, he actually sold them. According to the story, apparently he sold them to traveling gypsies. Okay. Oh, so they've been barbecued. So, yeah, okay. he sold them to the ground as okay. a gift to the devil. I thought, you're, yeah, he, he murdered them or paid someone else to. The couple regularly fought physically. He oh, loved fair. that she could both take and give a punch. Holy fair. Okay. He loved her even more when he found out she was pregnant. But a few weeks later, they lost the pregnancy. Yeah, because they fucking had their wrestling matches and their It's UFC a beautiful punches. baby crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy wasn't too torn up. It was very early. But I Stephen, only want a lizard. on the other hand, made a coffin for the positive pregnancy test. Yeah, he's always so, nice. All right, so he's in a good place again. Yeah. He just, he just keeps getting better. When she broke it off, he slashed her tires, then crashed his car while fleeing the scene. Then he called her and asked for a ride home. Um, uh, um, I, I know that um, th- this might seem awkward. <laughs> and knowing him, she said yes and dated him for another two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it seems, I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> While racking up nominations for worst boyfriend ever, Stephen continued his studies. In 2004, he enrolled in a PhD program in local history, a research based program that allowed him to work on his. On, what did I? I don't even know what I wrote. There. That's okay. You don't have to write perfect. It's just write 2004. Good. I forgot. Like we're now. Oh, a lot of work on his own. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah this is 2004. We're this is recent. Yeah. He spent his time reading murder books and visiting local sites of grisly crimes. On the rare occasion he showed up for class, did anyone else picture like uh, bears like doing things like pickpocketing, <laughs> like <laughs> doing graffiti, <laughs> grisly crimes? You uh, there, bear? Put man, that down. I wish my mind was that whimsical. <laughs> <laughs> You so know, officer, something? I I, uh, I think I have a suspect because there's a there's 35 pounds of missing salmon and claw marks. <laughs> if they disagree, with, oh yeah, on a, on the rare occasion he actually showed up for class, he gained a reputation for threatening classmates if they disagree with him during discussion. The university had to warn him to behave himself. Oh behave! Oh behave! 
While he got worse and worse at socializing, Stephen dove headlong into the internet. Ah, uh, this, this is, is the exact place he needed to go. Yeah, this is the demise of Stephen now. Yeah. yeah or he'll find people, place to or exchange find, ideas. Or he'll find people that he'll finally fit in with, which is way more terrifying. Uh, yeah, there's it, power in that group. Yeah. <laughs> he was an early adopter of Web 2.0, joining networking, dating, and chat sites, and writing blogs. But his favorite oh, part God. of the internet... Is this how the Huffington Post got started? <laughs> This actually is the story of Ariana. Yeah, this is, this is I cry. knew they had a really liberal slant. I didn't realize just how liberal it was. Yeah. <laughs> but his favorite part of the net was his MySpace page. Oh, yeah. Under the name Tequila his, Tequila. <laughs> under the name of his alter ego, Ven Pariah. There he compiled a collection of photos and biographies of over, over 120 of the world's most vicious serial killers. His gallery of murder included the statement, quote, most of my heroes don't appear on no stamps. Ugh. How could a killer be your hero? I'm just going through this again. How could a killer be your hero? Oh, if you want to kill people. Yeah. This is terrifying. Yeah. This, guy's, this guy's screaming well, to the world like, the I want to kill least, people. At the very least, so far, he's all talk and no walk. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm happy about. So far, he's actually a pretty cool guy. He's got I, I'm not going to say that. He's yeah. got weapons. I he poured hot water on He that. reads a lot. He poured hot water on that person. He dresses super cool. I don't like the hot he water He treats thing. everybody really nice. You're being sarcastic, and I can sense that because of the pheromones you release when you're being sarcastic. By 2009. Sure, I sniffed you bed earlier. This hmm? is a very sarcastic right? smell. I'm sniffing his shirt as we speak. By 2009, Stephen, now like in purple. his mid-30s. Started to drink more and gain weight. Oh, nice. So he's like the rest of us. He tried dating sites, <laughs> but they let He is nowhere. like us, right? He's just like us. Uh, it's in the Us Weekly. Killers. They're just like us. <laughs> they gain weight. They drink whiskey from Trader Joe's. They have swords. <laughs> they have swords. <laughs> they walk their pets. Yeah, they're lizards shit everywhere. They're just like us. <laughs> he tried dating sites, but they led nowhere. Sorry. He has to pick. Hey, could you pick up after your fucking lizard? So he began turning to his working girl friends for sex. When he wasn't trading heroin for non-orgasms, he harassed his former friends and girlfriends, racking up a collection of police reports. By the end of the year... But the police were like, we're still going to do nothing about this, right? And they're like, right. And they're like, go team. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, break. break. Let's all, I mean, take a break. Yeah. We, need to take, we need to not do anything for a while. <laughs> Who wants to get a drink? Anybody? Hello, I'm Sting. I heard you called the police. <laughs> he would be just as effective as the actual yeah, police at right? this point. Yeah. At least he'd be Ooh, watching him. Probably uh, more so because he would at least stir some emotion yeah. in this, in this well, cold, cold heart. Every move he made, every breath he took, yeah. he's there. Sting would be there you, watching right? him. Right? But it's interesting. This that song could be an anthem Roxanne, either for right? Stephen or, or for the cops. Yeah, that's you don't have to put on the red light. By the, the end of the year, even the staff at his apartment complex were worried. That you can see the from manager's your apartment? office with a panic button specifically for the lizard man. That's, Kick him out. Can you imagine? I mean, that, that should make his ego feel good, right? They put a panic button in just for you. <laughs> on June twenty second, two thousand nine. That'd be very short sighted of them for them to tell him about the panic. No, but button. I'm just That'd saying, be... like you know, because he has such a huge ego, like to know, like people oh. that scared, they put a panic button in. If someone did that to any of us, we would be like, "What the fuck? Uh, we should probably change our just behavior." For me, yeah, yeah. On June twenty second, two thousand nine. That's why I locked my doors late. Susan, a recovering addict and sex worker, went missing. Oh no! Oh, oh it's begun. It's when four begun. men turned up dead, overdosed from bad heroin. Cops assumed that she met the same fate. When one of Stephen's friends showed him an article on the disappearance, he remarked that it was strange that they hadn't found a body before beginning an impromptu lecture on the many ways to dispose of one. Oh, wow. Mm. Uh, already, I mean, still not incriminating, but weird because we know so much about Stephen. On April 26, 2010. Stephen Wolf. Shelley was seen on CCTV camera for 15 seconds before she disappeared. A few days later... Her corner partner, Bridget, ran into Stephen and asked if he'd seen her. He replied, don't worry, babe, she'll be okay. <sighs> that means he killed her. Yeah. That's serial killer talk Just for... say no, man. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just nah. say that. Like, I mean, you want to keep doing what you're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, have you seen my friend who went missing? Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, shit. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. <sighs> Maybe... All right, well, if you do see her, just let me know, okay? Okay, she's not, she's not, she's definitely, definitely not, definitely not in my closet right now. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. I'm glad you checked. Right. You're such a, you're so sweet. Thank, thank, you're so thank sweet. You. Hey, if you want, you can come check it out, too. I'll, you know what? 
I'm gonna do one more lap just to look for her. But okay. if you'll be here, all right, cool. Just all right. Just when you're there, make sure you look directly into my crossbow. Well, I have time. <laughs> That's <laughs> she might be in there. Do me a favor. That cool feeding thing where you swallow rats. Yeah. Save it till I get there. Okay. I already have. I a, really think it's I've, cool. I have a couple rats in my cheek ready to go at any moment. Oh, you are you are just the best. Yeah. I don't know where your friend is. <laughs> One month later, Suzanne went missing. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who do we think it was? <laughs> Fucking weirdo, dude. She was the third addict turned prostitute to vanish in a year, but the police didn't see a connection. What? <laughs> well, well we how? Didn't, we didn't really yeah. research it, really. You know, a couple whores go missing. A few days later, Bridget stopped by Stevens for a chat and discovered that his usually spotless home was, was covered in, in blood. Disarray. Oh, no. He's breaking. Clothes were everywhere. His coffee table was covered in dr- with drawings of a hand clamp, a guillotine, and metal forceps. The drawings of those things? That's a mm-hmm. lot of straight lines. Probably have a ruler down there, a straight edge, getting bored. When he began to rant about That's the Yorkshire point. Ripper, Bridget quickly left. Yeah, fuck this. This is like yeah. that scene in fucking Last Man on Earth with uh, Fred Armisen being the killer, and everyone's just like fucking, I don't think I want to hang out in this room with you. That Monday. Have a good one. Stephen posted on MySpace for the last time. Oh, no. He set his mood as evil. And referred to finally completing. Oh, that's really on the nose. That's fucking badass. Yeah, as, uh, as creative as he's been. <laughs> Listening to some fucking good metal. <laughs> Evil in league with Satan. And he referred to completing, to finally completing, quote, four of my more important accomplishments. On the morning of Monday, May 24th. Four accomplishments? And there are how many people missing? Three right now. Uh, oh, God. On the morning of May 24th, Peter G., the apartment manager began his weekly routine of going through the building's security footage. The 16 cameras had been installed three years prior, after residents demanded something be done about the drug dealers and prostitutes hanging around their home. Peter had to go through over 1,000 hours of footage a week. Let me try that one more time because I lost my... Yeah, wait, that's not even... There's not not that many hours in a week. Well, it's in Fast Forward. You're not watching it. Okay, okay, okay. Extreme Fast Forward. Peter had to go through over 1,000 hours of footage a week, lazily viewing each tape on Fast Forward. He'd gone through 13 tapes of nothing that day. But when he watched camera 14, he suddenly noticed a man dragging something down the hallway that appeared to be another person. Oh, good God. Peter went through the footage, and here's what he paid, what he pieced together. Jesus. Can you imagine being there like, what the fuck am I watching right now? Whoa. Also. This is good weed, bro. You make no attempt to hide it? You talk all this shit. You talk all, no, you talk all this shit mm-hmm. about how you're going to be better than the Yorkshire sh- r- Ripper. Yeah. And you're so bad at it. You had 30 plus years of planning. That's all you talked about, and you're that shitty at it? Come on, know, you, Steven. You, you think we would have planned a little bit. the fuck on. At 229 I like morning, efficiency. <laughs> I know. It's like cut the body up inside so, your house, right? Or at least try. Here's at least what, act like you're trying. Here's what. Well, you, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know who. He, you don't know him, bro. You don't <sighs> know Griff. Yeah, I know. I know a bad worker when I see a bad worker. <laughs> yeah. So here's what. Here's what Peter G. put pieced together from the footage. Mm-hmm. At two twenty nine in the morning, Stephen Griffiths entered the building with a woman and headed to his flat. Mm-hmm. Five minutes later, she ran out the door and down the hall, followed by Stephen. Wearing black leather fingerless gloves and carrying a crossbow. Oh, Jesus Christ. He caught up, knocked her out, and dragged her back to his doorway, where he stopped to shoot her with the crossbow before dragging her inside. Oh, my God. Good God. 26 minutes later, he came back out alone, walked right up to the camera, and stared into the lens before giving the finger and returning to his flat. Oh, he's punk. What he's punk rock after psych- all this. What a turns fucking out psychopath. Boy, fucking piss off. Jesus Christ. Just after 3 a.m., he left the building. Raising his bottle of Sprite to the camera in a toast. Did you say bottle of Sprite? Yes. Fuck, this guy is a fucking dork. <laughs> He's got lizards and he drinks Sprite when he murders people. That poor fucking apartment manager. Oh, yeah, right? For real. You, 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 your job is so boring. You have to go through a thousand hours of footage a week. And the one time you see something kind of cool, oh, it's a murder. Never mind. Actually, though, that. I mean, what else do you want to be? Obviously, you want someone to just be flashing their titties. But that, yeah. You're going to have to see some murders, dude. Sorry. It's what it's about. It sucks. <sighs> yeah. It's your job. Good Lord. Yeah, that's why I didn't take the apartment manager job in, uh, back in my old place mm. in Studio City. I was like, oh, people are probably murder there every week. I don't feel like watching murders all the time, bro. I, It's too much. I already talk about them on my show. Oh, God. Peter called the cops. Peter called the cops. And then the cops came. And the cops were like, he's free (laughs) to go. (laughs) That afternoon, over 60 officers in full tactical gear secured the building. The Uh, breach team. This is them. You know, you know, in like in sports when they have a makeup call. (laughs) That's what this is. This is (laughs) 
like, oh, we'll just send all the cops from the previous yeah. crimes that were supposed to be there. <laughs> Holy, 57 yards. Yeah, yeah. First down forever. Yeah. Yeah, that means death, folks. But we'll yeah. be back after these messages. That afternoon, over 60 officers in full tactical gear secured the building. Mm -hmm. The breach team broke down his door, expecting a fight. But when the door came down, Stephen called out quietly, I'm in here. As the officers surrounded him, Stephen told them, quote, I'm Osama bin Laden. Because he's fucking a lizard about this, right? He's like, ah. Uh, He's doing that monkey uh, thing where the, as you've that video where the monkey uses a frog as a flashlight. He was doing what? that. With his, you ever seen that video before? No, that sounds I feel like that would be. Your that sounds like video. the most nightmarish and hilarious thing ever. <laughs> yeah, because if I was that frog, that's awful. But also as the monkey, that's hilarious. I'm just trying to visualize it, and yeah. it's like it's not exactly working. It's exactly what you think it is. That's so is wrong. It though? Nature, nature exactly... is such a fucking asshole sometimes, uh -huh. isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Isn't nature a dick? Yeah. Yes. Jesus. I mean, it's also a place to put one, apparently. Oh, good comeback, but still. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. A quick visual scan determined the girl wasn't there. Does the monkey come inside the frog? And then, like, it's like. You're asking the important questions, John. Right? Just the crossbows. <laughs> I'm all about the orgasm questions. <laughs> the girl wasn't there. Just the crossbows, reptiles, murder books, and a large collection of small bags and luggage. The, the goo's not here, boss. <laughs> they sealed it off for later inspection and took him in. Stephen began his interrogation by saying, quote, this is the end of the line for me. Oh, Before he's matter of his, factly his beans. detailing every single aspect of his crimes. He told them how he killed Susan, the first, with a hammer in the bedroom. Then Shelly and Suzanne with the crossbow. So this, how soon is this after the, the actual murder? Well, the first one happened a while back. The last two have happened within the last couple of days. Okay. Yeah. So it's been like, is this a span of a year or two? Or no, no, no. This is all in the story. It's happened really fast. Cross. Yeah, it has all it has all happened really fast. Yeah. Okay. So like, he's like talking. About this is the end of the line, but it's not. It hasn't been like a chase, a hunt for a serial killer for five years. It's been no. He he broke and he broke quick. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It finally happened. It's and called it's, breaking. Well, that's what I call it. I don't okay. know. I think yeah, that yeah, sounds that, familiar. Yeah, it's like breaking. Like he finally got his big break. Yeah. And yeah. now he's repped by CIA. Yeah. There you go. And he's a director and a producer now. Yeah. Oh yeah, gets that double credit, makes that double money, dude. Right? <sighs> Good for him. Usually, because usually it starts, they kill, they kill one, and then they wait, then they kill another, and it escalates. That's the that, that's the thing that you normally do. They escalate. It's a curve. It's a curve. Uh, Asan, yeah. Asan, can I ask you if I came to your apartment right now, would you have a collection of serial killer books? You seem to know a lot. No, I do have a lot of hats though. That's I a, don't know what that. A <laughs> lot of hats. Hat I do have collection? a lot of hats. Yeah. Do you have a lot of lizards and hats? No, but I'm working on the lizards. I'm trying to get laid. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's learning, man. Yeah. But I think because he waited so long, he just escalated. Escalated immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over the oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, so he killed Shelly and Suzanne with the crossbow. Mm -hmm. Then he dismembered them in his bathtub. Oh, I was saying that as a joke, but he did end the yeah, strangest was, part of all. That was a lot more fun when it was a joke yeah. and way worse to that. <laughs> like actually these happened. are all pretty gruesome. Oh uh, yeah. Cross no, no. crossbow crossbows especially gruesome. Oh yeah. No crossbow. I mean, look. I think we've peaked. I think nothing worse is going to happen from this point forward. Yeah, this fucking this Cross, guy's crossbow, fucking oh. a maniac. The strangest part of all may have been the motive, because he had none. He blamed them all on his alter ego, Ven Pariah, the pseudo human. I wish his alter ego was Ven Diesel, even more friendly. <laughs> the right? pseudo human. <laughs> What is that? Damn. See, that's but this is what happens when you like are born in a place called something running through something. All your titles are too long. I like that. I like that. His alter ego is Vin Diesel. Like, look, it's about family. Yeah. <laughs> your Vin Diesel Whenever. sounds like sounds like Alex Jones. All my voices are the same voice. Vin Diesel rips off his mask and it's Alex Jones. <laughs> I was in Fast and the Furious because I wanted to warn you of a new government conspiracy. If you watch Fast 7, it's no. government propaganda. Is it really? Well, the whole point of Fast 7 is a hacker creates something that can like hack into every phone and some shit. Yeah. Some shit like that. Finally. And Vin Diesel's job is to make sure to get that program and give it to the American government before it gets in the hands of, of somebody the wrong who... people. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious, That's government dude. propaganda. Oh, fuck. <laughs> they added, the credits are it's all join the navy today. Yeah, and then Paul Walker dies. It's a very, it's a very weird. <laughs> a little piece movie. of Paul Walker dies inside <laughs> of all of us. Everything that we know, I have documents to prove the entire Fast and the Furious franchise is a government conspiracy designed to give all our cell phone information to the federal government. Why do you think Paul Walker got killed? Yeah, I mean, the same way as Princess Diana. It's a conspiracy going to the highest levels. Paul Walker knew about the satanic sexual rituals. They always have that in there. They always say so that. So he blamed them all, all the, all the killings on his alter ego, Ven Pariah, the pseudo-human. Mm-hmm. 
Over the last few years, an internal civil war had been raging inside the head of Stephen Griffiths. He claimed that each murder was merely a casualty of that struggle. Oh, what a fun way to say it. Let me put it this way. How fucking into yourself are you? My God, man. That's really what this is about. Take a fucking walk, you piece of shit. Just Just wash the baby oil out of your hair, take off the sunglasses, and be a dude. Just take a walk and just say hi to someone on the street. Yeah, get a cat or a dog for once. You don't need a conversation. Just say hi. Let your lizards free. And I mean that literally. Don't, don't, Don't start having your dick hanging out of your pants. Officers were shocked by the calm confession. And the fact that Suzanne was already dead. How are the officers shot? They should have all the notes of all the times they let him go. And they're like, oh, wow, we should have seen this shit coming. But they weren't prepared for what came next. Suzanne him. He was jacking just... off, even with his handcuffs on. He was so horny. Suzanne wasn't just his third victim. She was the third victim that he had eaten. Oh, oh my God. I had a little bit. I had a little bit. A little bit of a cannibal feeling with this. Mm-hmm. I did. I had no idea. I my, had a little bit of a cannibal feeling. As yeah. perverse as I let my mind get, it wasn't going there. He ate these chicks. Not only that, while he had cooked the first two. Is he like a combo of, what, did he make beef tartare out of one of them? He had eaten the last one raw. Oh, what God. Oh, he's just the worst sushi. Quote, Anyone else want to barf? Yeah, I was going to get sushi after this, too. God damn. A little poke? I was totally going to get poke. Just uh, mix poke. it all up in there? Not with you the way you just said that. He There's ex- a femur in my fucking seaweed. <laughs> oh. He explained, quote, that's part of the magic. The raw? Oh, God. Well, raw meat is fucking amazing, but that's just. I'm having significantly less fun. <laughs> yeah. That's the name of this podcast. <laughs> significantly less fun. Yeah. New one. It just got weird. Yeah. Welcome to our newest podcast to Death Cat. What is it? Death, Death Squad. <laughs> <laughs> significantly less fun. Yeah. Starring. Yeah, this is this is gonna be the gruesome section of the of the story. Yeah, I can tell. There's more to talk about. The next day, does a he shopper, bite an eyeball and it pops? The next day, a shopper by the river noticed a black rucksack floating near the bank. Oh yeah, get that free backpack. The customer told a shop clerk who pulled it out of the river, but as he lifted the bag, out fell a human head. Uh, you know what? I'm taking thoughts. I think I'll just go to REI and get a new one. All right. Within hours, a dive team was scouring the riverbed for body parts. They found 81 pieces in that section alone. What? The fuck? Before 81 long, pieces of a body? Over 100 officers and detectives were investigating around 130 different locations. They found another bag containing a killing kit of knives, hacksaws, and razor blades, and what appeared to be more human remains. God damn. Soon, the story of the crossbow cannibal was all over the news. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect. The double C's. Perfect name. Well, it was already sensational enough. He uses the Comedy Central logo. The CC. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That was mine first. Uh, The story gained steam when reporters discovered his MySpace page filled with bizarre rants and intense photographs. Uh, Noted tabloid The Sun ran a story with the headline, quote, I watched Crossbow Killer eat live rat. Oh, God. But the story uh, wasn't confined to the news. The BBC soap opera EastEnders was forced to reshoot an episode that featured a prostitute being strangled by a preacher. A cartoon featured in the Apple Daily Taiwan news coverage featured a woman who looked like one of the victims being shot with a crossbow. A local shop owner got in trouble for selling imitation crossbows and samurai swords. I mean, hey, look, the great thing about capitalism is (laughs) (laughs) we can turn something bad into something good. We can turn something bad into money. I was able to buy a new brick home. Even Lady Gaga took some heat. No fucking way. For her way. meat outfit? Her meat for outfit? a show in Manchester the following month, where she played dead while a male backup dancer bit her neck, releasing fake blood. Yeah, but Lady Gaga's weird, though. Yeah. <laughs> She's not trying to mock a murder. Yeah. I, can't, I don't know her personally, but I, I'm sure she wasn't trying to mock a murder, right? She could have been. She could have been. She also could not have been. Coming to True TV this fall, Murder Mockers. If the background dancer had a crossbow, I'd be like, okay. Hey, Gaga, I have an idea for such a good bit. (laughs) Like, it's going to kill, literally. (laughs) You fucking asshole. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to sit on that one until you laughed. I I like it, though. I I enjoy it quite a bit. I didn't enjoy it. The arraignment began on May 28th, 2010. Can't win them all. Oh, my God. With the clerk asking Stephen, quote, can you give the court your name, please? He scratched his head and replied, I'm Vin Protégé. 2010. The crossbow cannibal. Oh, God. 
Oh, he really went by his fucking fake it just, name. Record scratch. His, it just it blows my mind that like these these like terrible things happen, and I'm just like in high school. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, like that's crazy. Yeah, dude, you were you were just like making weird little doodles and trying to ignore geometry. Class. Is that your alibi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit, they're oh, on to me. You were in high school, you said. <laughs> huh? What high school was it? What was it called? Oh, my Crossbow Academy. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Didn't a lot of students come up missing at that school? <laughs> After it, was, sh- it was right across from the prostitute emporium. This is the <laughs> emporium. Yeah. You can buy as many as you can eat. I mean, uh, hang out with. <laughs> After a short pause, the clerk continued, quote, Can you give the court your address, please? Um, 666. Here, I guess. That's what he said? Yeah. Man. Did guy's... someone went, hey, stop being a smart ass. Yeah, seriously. The only straight answer he gave was a yes when the clerk read his birthday and asked if that was correct. Birthday week. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> but, but now we sip oh, champagne I, I, when I, I we thirsty. I can't believe you remembered. <laughs> thank you so much. Nobody knows. He was taken to await trial at Wakefield Prison, also known as the Monster Mansions. Oh, that's kind of cool. Because it played a host to a who's who of horrible European criminals, including war criminals from the Bosnian genocide. Ooh, Ooh. modern Nazi style shit. It is also the birthplace of the nursery rhyme, Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry yep. bush. And when you go round the mulberry bush, it can be quite gruesome. I mean, that's basically the tune. This it's the same tune as Meals on the Bus, essentially. People cut people up and then they eat them. They have their crossbows and they have lizards and uh, weird sunglasses. And yes. commit ethnic cleansing in Bosnia. And, yeah. and, and some of us committed some ethnic cleansing, but, you know, who doesn't, you know, when in Rome? Uh, here we go around the mulberry bush. Yeah, right. <laughs> as fe- right? and it, was, it was written because female inmates used to exercise around a mulberry tree in the courtyard. Oh. Stephen did not take well to his way more friends. lighthearted than I, I know, had anticipated huh? it being. Yeah, I, I know just... we're all in here for murder, but you know, ladies, we should keep our calisthenics going. It's time for my morning constitutional. Mm. They're not shitting around the, with the tree, are they? That's what the, a morning constitutional is. Oh, it's a walk. Is. It's a walk, yeah. It's a walk. You yeah. just thought old English people talked about taking morning dumps all the time? Yeah. yeah. That's what you thought? Like, my morning, my all morning these Jane Austen <laughs> novels were just mentioning people taking massive shits in the morning. Yeah, but I haven't read Jane Austen. I, ain't. <laughs> I respect myself paper? more than that. I'm going to go push a loaf. It's the AM. <laughs> <laughs> An AM loaf, yes. <laughs> Well, he, uh, Stephen did not take well to his new surroundings. When he appeared in court 10 days later, he could barely stay awake because he'd been staying up night after night. Daddy's got a log to drop. <laughs> Two days later, <laughs> court almost became a moot point when a guard happened to look at a surveillance camera to see Stephen on the floor of his cell with a plastic bag over his head and a sock around <laughs> oh, his neck. God, this guy's such an annoying asshole. I know, for real. Now they gotta stop so him from killing himself. This fucking, I mean, fuck. this is the most, just the most annoying fucking guy. I picture him looking like the guy from uh, the Lebowski, a, a nihilist. Oh yeah, no, guy? yeah, precisely. All right, can you just, dude? Can you just stop being like? Oh, I get it. You like murder. Shut the fuck Jeez. up. Right? Jesus. The, the last one I did, I loved the criminal, and this one I feel the exact opposite. Oh yeah, that's what yeah. the show is all about. Good God. They rushed in and were able to revive him. Even, Yay! <laughs> well, you need to keep him alive so you can study him to yeah. get better profile. Yeah. Even worse, they suspected that he tried to kill himself because of his ego. Definitely. Just five days after declaring himself the crossbow cannibal to the world, Stephen was knocked off the front page by a taxi driver who shot and killed 12 people Wait, 90 miles to the he's north. He's just being dramatic? He's like, dude, it's not. It's a numbers game, man. You only killed four. That guy killed twelve. That's yeah. how. That's how it works. Yeah, sorry, bro. That's why they're not supposed. They shouldn't be fucking saying murderers' names on the news because they know, least, they try to outcompete each other. Body counts to Definitely add not. insult to injury. The other inmates at the monster mansion chanted at him, chanted at him when they heard the news. "Quote: You're not famous anymore. Uh-huh. You're not famous anymore. Uh-huh. None of the other murderers uh-huh. respect you. You're a loser, you murderer. Fucking pussy. You deserve that. You're not part of the of cool shit. murderers group. You're gonna have to hang out on the fringe like a lonely, nerdy murderer. That's even- amazing. When he can't even fit in with murderers, That's so great. You deserve that. You really <laughs> deserve that. <laughs> you've got this guy. You've got a guy committing genocide over here. Be like, Oh well, I, uh, I I cannot even hang out with this guy. What a <laughs> fucking loser, right? Should have killed more kids, bro. Seriously, man, the, you didn't even have a tank or anything. Look, Stephen, you get it, right? <laughs> you get it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, look, we nothing personal, but your numbers are pathetic. Look, I think you're a good dude, but <laughs> Ivankovic over here, he murders babies. I can't be seen with you. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> But if you ever want to, like, if I'm if I'm free on the weekend yeah. and my friends are out of town, oh, feel free. Pass notes between our jail cells. If you okay. want to see a movie in a different cell so no one sees us together, yes, we'll talk about it. It is nothing personal. 
Stephen was moved to a special unit nicknamed Hannibal's Cell. Whoa! For its resemblance to the clear plastic observation tank used to old ha- Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. He was nonplussed. Not only was he off the front page, not only was he in a fishbowl, but Stephen Griffiths was also quitting smoking. <sighs> Are you fucking serious? You picked right a bad time to start, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, don't quit carbs when you're in the middle of a murder trial. It's an old saying. Doctors prescribed him Champix, but it did little to help his mood. He threw a tantrum when they refused to let him have a TV in his cell because he was missing his favorite show. Cops? No, it was some like Law and Order, Victims Unit. It was like a week. It was like a weekly kind of gossip TV show. What? He it was like his so favorite show wasn't like one of those weird murder. Yeah, it was like Unsolved Mysteries yeah. with that weird Crypt Keeper as the host. Yeah. No, it was like it was like somewhere between USA Today and TMZ. This guy is really hard to predict. Yeah, he is all over the place. He's only predictably as uh, or predictable as being unpredictable. Yeah, like, for real. Oh, his favorite show is Friends. WTF? <laughs> he That's caused, his favorite podcast, right? He <laughs> with caused, Mark Barron. <laughs> <laughs> I'd you like know, to be I like really... Martin Man. He's a killer too, you know. I love all of the interviews. I mean, sometimes the introduction goes on a little long for my tastes, but I, and that, ep- that episode with Louis C.K. fantastic. Mm, <laughs> that's the way they cleared the air. Yeah, he didn't ask Will Forte the deep enough questions for me, but I would have eaten Will Forte. He caused another security incident when guards noticed that the chicken bones from his food had gone missing. Did you eat your bones again? As God many damn inmates it. will use them as a shiv because they are easy to hide and avoid from metal. Detectors. That's true. There, there's boneless chicken. Yeah, no, they could do that. That's way smarter. <laughs> yeah. That is a good point, fellas. How did we not just give them chicken fingers? No, bro, it's like five dollars for like ninety chicken McNuggets. <laughs> <laughs> the inmates. What a stupid problem. To have. <laughs> God, I just cannot figure out how to stop the guys from getting chicken bones that they sharpen in knives. It really is one of those kind of things, though, that you're like, ah, that should have been solved a while ago. Dude, I mean, the fucking the chicken fingers at the store are pretty much prison food. We could just yeah. give them that. <laughs> Well, society is a prison of some way, right? <laughs> but it was a false alarm. He'd been removing them because of another one of his phobias, fear of choking on chicken bones. Oh, okay. Again, spe- fear- specificity. Mm-hmm. Fear of the chicken bone. Because of good behavior, they moved him to a private cell with a TV. Oh, at least they didn't let him out. My God. I, you, I, <laughs> I, was, I was way worried. <laughs> the warden let him spend the night with his wife. Yeah. Which promptly backfired. I don't see September. why not. You seem like you're a good chap. Hey, you keep a real clean cell. You're like lizards, you say. I like lizards, too. It probably Go back- ahead. Be back- among society, yes. Here, there's a girl's school we'll send you by. You seem like a nice fellow. Would you like a van with no uh, windows? Maybe a bolt, a deadbolt on the back, yes? It probably backfired in September. I have a box of duct tape that I don't mind you borrowing if you like. You can have it if you promise to take it with this knife. And with this old crossbow laying around. You don't know to use... You know to use these? Oh, wonderful. I was gathering dust. I'd love to see it get used. But it only works well on human flesh. Please, find some victims. It backfired when he smashed the TV set and dragged a piece of broken glass across his throat. I hate this show! Good God. He survived. Of course. Uh, You know, they always, they survive, right? The psycho killer, he survives. Two weeks later, he tried to swallow a plastic bag. But all that rat swallowing really made his gullet (laughs) prepared for weird shit. It nearly worked, but they pulled it out just in time. They moved him back to the fishbowl. So in protest, he swallowed four batteries. Time to tie this guy up. Then he went on a hunger strike. He wanted to be moved to a psychiatric facility, but they refused. By now, Stephen Griffiths just wanted to get it over with, which may explain why, at his next appearance in court, he surprised everyone by pleading guilty. He's like, just give me the bloody if chair. For real. For real. We all know I did this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bored. Please, just give me the chair. Just kill me. As they sat in shock, he looked at the gallery, containing family members of his victims and mouthed, who are you looking at? Oh, my God. That's God. fucking brutal. One of the fathers pointed he at him thinks, and shouted. He, he thinks he's so cool and he's so lame because of it. Oh no! Yeah, he's he's certainly that he's guy. He's the lamest dude. He's the guy who has like that uh that comb that's like the switchblade comb. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Are those things bad? I, I, I don't have one in my pocket though. One of the fathers pointed at Stephen and shouted, like, "You're a-, a dickhead." I mean, a father of a victim said, "You're a dickhead." Yeah. You had all that time yeah. to think about a line. <laughs> the British are so respectful though. Yeah. To him, he's like, "That was very harsh cussing." Where's your writers? You didn't even hire anybody to. This is your big moment. No, he just no, he knows he's, he's not going to say anything worse. He's not going to he riffs. Call, he's a vamp. He's not going to. Yeah. You're a bloody cunt. Like he's just. Well, no, someone else called him a fucking cunt at some point. Ah, see, you yeah. know, that was a different. That was from a different. But area. not this guy. This guy just 
This guy just went with it the first thing he He panicked. Had. He swung and missed. You, yeah. sir, are a jerk. In a small bit of irony. You are mini pants. Well put. <laughs> in a small bit of irony, Stephen's birthday in 1969 happened to be the exact same week when the death penalty had been abolished in the UK. At the end of the proceedings, the judge handed him down three life sentences. Stephen Griffiths remains in prison to this day. Oh, fricht. Thankfully, he's in prison still, right? Or that's, the, that's my I mean, we'll see. That's my yeah. favorite thing the courts do. Like, you're in jail for three life sentences, or you're in jail for 287 years. Oh, come on. Well, I mean, medical technology, maybe next thing you know, nano robots are keeping you alive. I mean, that's but that's the way, though, that, that they, 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 that's kind of like their way around certain parts of the system, because you can get a life sentence and then get out earlier. Hmm. Like they can, they can have those like mm-hmm. life sentences, and then yeah, good behavior, and you did this and that. So, but now it's but like now you have a two other life sentences. Exactly, system. like mm-hmm. you, that the, you cleared one life sentence, so, but you still got two more. It kind of keeps us safe. And it's also kind of running up the score. Yeah, 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 at this point, you're like, bro, I know like it's I the said, fourth quarter, and we're way ahead, but I'm gonna pull my starters. <laughs> yeah. They're makeup calls. They're like, fuck, we should have kept you in jail <laughs> years ago. Man, you know, back earlier when I said he was all talk and that was kind of lame, yeah. I missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that period of the show? Yeah, I missed that. I, 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 I thought the entire time he would just be all talk, so I thought it would be funny to make fun of him for it. And now that he's done all this shit, I would like to apologize. I, I, <laughs> I thought Slayton was going to twist the story. I thought he was going to have some sort of financial fraud, you know? Like, yeah, or he was just going to be some profiler that was shitty. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's, a just, cri- it's a crime show, though. So to I mean, me, the yeah. big yeah. twist was like, him. you're like, look, he's gonna be, we know he's going to be a serial killer. Something's going to happen. Okay. The eating to me is disgusting. Where he's like, "Can I have some people tartar?" That's see, yeah. That was a huge twist. Stop saying tartar though. Tartar Can I get some <laughs> some some sushimi? I'm trying to figure oh, out sushimi. Uh, that's funny. Or sasha sasha shimi? I don't know. Yeah. But it, this this guy, a bad guy. Now, if you had to compare both uh, cannibals that we've done stories on, this guy's this way guy's, worse. This guy's worse. Okay. Way worse. I just want to see where your moral no, because Armin at. Muse. Um, he that's got the per- guy who asked. He got permission. Yeah, he went. That's the Craigslist oh, yeah, guy, no, right? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that guy. Yeah, we did that story on here with Ian Edwards and Armin Muse. Tur- like turned down people who had like said they were down. He was like, no, you're not actually down. You're not into this. Yeah. He asked permission. It's gross he and got- weird. You know, you went around living, uh, you know, in the apartment above you. But uh, he's he's he just he did something weird. But he didn't harm anybody other than the guy whose dick he ate. Or tried to eat. Who he asked over- him to harm him. Yeah. Who wanted his dick eaten. You know, it was you all want- consensual. To each his own, right? I'm all about right. liberty. You if know, you're telling you me, you dick first eaten. of all, both from like a, from a, how bad of a person are you? And from like a, what's it like hanging out with you? Yeah. If I'm choosing between Armin Muse and Stephen Griffiths, oh, I'm Armin taking Muse. Armin Muse. Now look, he's German. He has a face that looks like a, he, his face looks like a lizard kind of. So he is creepier on a, in a visual audio medium. But he's not going to ramble on at you about like, Bro, did you read the last book about murderers? Would you eat tartare with him? Would you go out with a cannibal and eat tartare if he'd been released from jail? And or or like Armin's not in jail, so you could go out. I to mean, eat I, Armin. can I watch the sushi chef cut the fish? Yeah, yeah. But would you just still eat like beef tartare? Sitting Which next one? To one a, with Armin or with Steven? With Griffiths? Armin. With Armin. Would you sit with Armin at a table at, at a Ooh. fucking fancy Italian LA restaurant or a French uh, uh, LA restaurant where you're going to get the most best beef tartare ever? But you're going to eat that with him. Would you be able to just because like I went to the human body exhibits yeah. once, you know, where they have all the the, the People, yeah, the real the people. Yeah, where, people. You, where you jerk off in public, and, yeah. And, and, and no, that, that's I not what wrong? I did. I just went and, you know, checked out fucking human bodies. Yeah, yeah, you got that very where wrong. You go, where you go chaw for chaw with a, you got very skin, wrong. with a skinned body. But something weird subconscious yeah, happened there. Yeah, a skinned Chinese man. That's, mm-hmm. They're all Chinese. I went to the I body. Mean, there's so many. I went to Body Worlds, and then I went and had, I ate at the pantry afterwards, which is an L.A., like, uh, an old, like, downtown L.A., like, yeah. uh, place. And I had fucking pot roast there. And I was eating, I was like, this is fucking disgusting. And I was like, why am I disgusted by this? And it all came together. I was like, oh, yeah, I just came from a place of human meat. I got I got I got very nauseous during the body's exhibit. Yes, I couldn't handle it. Yeah, it's at weird. the exhibit you felt nauseous. Well, yeah, because like it's a, it's a real body. But what really fucked with me is like, oh man, because like he got most of the bodies from like these Chinese prison camps that no one claimed the bodies from. Whoa! So it's like I heard about that. That's pretty yeah. weird. So it's like that's what fucked with me the most. It's like, oh man, these people have stories that nobody like we'll ever hear. Well, nobody will ever hear. And then we're just charging fifteen bucks to see them posed in like a fucking dribbling stance or shooting a hoop. You know what I mean? That's like so it trippy. was it like morally got a lot for me. It should and be I ended all up vomiting. famous people. It should be like. Okay, now here's Prince. We have him or, in the purple suit. Or we should just let people... That is a fucking amazing idea. Or we should just let people fucking rest <sighs> and leave their fucking bodies alone. Dude, I, I take the Native science, American perspective, though. use every part of the human. It's, it's, it's science, though. Why that's not? not science, though. That's uh, entertainment. You're what, science. Seeing the bodies? Yeah. That's a fucking pretty important thing. I would have the meal. Thing, I would have it just for the conversation. Oh, yeah, I now have the we're back to this. You guys, I want to have the conversation. We're all over the place. Okay, yeah. I want to know... I wanna know 
Just like wow, you would you'd be able to eat it with him sitting there, like knowing he is eating look, a human. I'm not promising I make it through the meal or I don't okay. freak out or. But vomit. you're saying you have the balls. I would make the attempt to go to this fucking meal and, and show attempt, up for, for the sure. reservation. And actually, okay, I like that about you. I make the, I make the, I'm all about the attempt. I I guess if yeah, I don't know if I could do that. Just for the fascination of like, be, just if you told me like, hey, you could like if, if we do crime Germany and everyone's like, hey, let's go out to dinner with Armin. That's our big event. I mean, if 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 they told you, okay, look at this <laughs> dinner with Armin booth, in Germany. If there was a booth be? where you could no, pay really. like ten bucks to stare into Armin's eyes for 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 ten for ten seconds, like I would, I'd I'd be like, yeah, yeah, let me see what's behind. Let me see. Yeah, I would do there. that. Yeah, I would do that. I don't know if I'd eat with a person like that yeah okay well, yeah. What, if, what, if he's, what, if, what, if, what if he's what if it's his treat well if he's buying yeah right At it's that hard point. to turn down free food i know right how can we how can people get a hold of you to go out to dinner and eat steak tartare yeah, with you bro Where oh do we find you on the internet yes you can find me at twitter we've already mentioned that mrjbahmad mr we'll jb in the show notes yes uh and my instagram oh is... i love your instagram you, thank you you have you have some good comedy on there i try mm-hmm. i try it's like a good magazine to read through your shit uh it's asan jb uh, asan j ahmad sorry so e-h-s-a-n-j-a-h M A D and listen to Spoil the Beans, guys. Check yeah. out Spoil the Beans. We'll, we'll, we will link his uh, we'll link us Instagram, on socials we'll do, and yeah, we'll everything. link the Spoil the Beans in our show notes. Yeah, spoil the beans. If you're listening on Laughable, which is uh, a fantastic app for all comedy podcasts, mm. you can just go and click Asan's face on this episode, and it'll take you right to his page that has a link to Spoil the Beans, so you can find that there. You can also follow our show at Crime Pod C R I I I M E P O D mm-hmm. on Twitter and Instagram. You can email us crimepodcast at gmail.com with your story suggestions, questions, dick pics, Vershevsky, all that stuff. Today's sources include The Crossbow Cannibal by Cyril Dixon and, of course, The Evil Robots at evil, Wikipedia. Evil robots that we've learned to respect. If you want to support the show, uh, another more of those five star ratings and reviews are super helpful. We love that. You can also go on the, on the Patreon. Uh, I think it's patreon.com slash crime pod and you can go there to get you can get our bonus shows and they also have the sticker of the month club with a new sticker based on the show every single month. A bunch of you have already signed up. Thank you so much. That round of stickers will be coming to you at the end of this month. It's gonna be so much fun, guys. I love I I love I love designing stuff and drawing fun stuff, and we're gonna make them based off of episodes and fun stuff we've said. It's it's gonna be good. Get those fucking stickers. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys at Crime Con for all you Southeasters. Come to Crime Con May 4th to 6th. Use that promo code CRIME with three eyes to get 10% off. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye, Rob. I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything.